Jane. I'm starting a new podcast where I'm going to be interviewing women in ministry um, just to learn a bit about their journey and how they grew their ministry so that other women can learn from what they're doing. Hi, here's another episode of The Ministry Journey, and today I'm going to be talking to Abby Oliedi. She is the founder of Women's World. She is team leader, which is another word for co-pastor of City Chapel, and she's also got a program called Transformation Moments that is being broadcast on TBN. Welcome, Abby. Really looking forward to speaking to you today. Oh, so, thanks, Marcia. Thanks for having me. Okay, and I love what you've got on, and we've both got the same hairstyle, so it's all good. Great women think alike. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> my first question to, to you is, I mean, you've got various ministry arms, but what inspired you to set out in ministry? And just give me a little bit of an outline of the kind of things your various ministry arms do. Hmm, what inspired me? I would say God inspired me um, because when I became a Christian, the person who kind of like um, led me to Christ or led me to rededicate my life happened to have been an intercessor. So oh. automatically she took me to prayer meeting and that was it. All my deliverance and everything happened during that time when I was in university. I was in my late teens, um, studying education at uni. And yeah, so the three years that I was on the at Unilad was a time to really develop my faith. So when I came over to England to do my master's, um, I How was- How old was you when you came? I was 21, 22. Okay. You know, when I came over to do my master's, a friend of mine who I was in Unilag would say, oh, Abby, there's this fellowship. You want to come? I'm like, okay, I'll come. He kept on pestering. And after a few months, or so, I thought, you know, if I don't go with this guy, he's really going to pester the living daylights out of me. So I went and my goodness, and that was it. It was Green Pastures Ministry then at Finsbury Park. Later on, it became Glory House. And so um, Pastor Albert invited me to become part of the leadership of the team. And that was it. That was my journey into ministry. And when I joined, then with a house fellowship, I started off with prayer. So what I was doing in Lagos, Nigeria, actually transcended over to the UK and it was intercession all the way. So that's how I got involved in ministry and then during time of prayers, I um, started something called a baby talk, you know, um, um, an outreach and a talk show with healthcare professionals and people who have testimonies of their journey through infertility. I used to organize that program. It was birthed out of prayer as well. Not that I tried for a baby, but it was something the Lord did on my hands. And thank God I had lots and lots of testimonies. And while I was doing that, um, you know, being the only female, you know, pastor at Green Pastures at that time, I started a women's ministry called Heba and then Women's World, you know, tackling all kinds of women issues, you know, and in between that, I also did something called stepping out to make a difference for those looking to set up their own businesses as well. So, yeah. So really, you've been pioneering for a long time. I mean, I do, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Glory, um, glory. I knew it when it was Glory House and, you know, it could have been described as almost like the spagnation of its time almost because it was just attracting young, uh, lots of young people. It, it was at that time when lots of uh, ministers from Africa, Nigeria um, notably, were coming over to the UK to start congregations and that was one of the vibrant ones. I remember going to um, Green Pastures on several several occasions. I didn't realise that you were the only women on the leadership team so yeah to girl power. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that but I'm going to say it anyway. I mean it, it's inspiring to hear that you know you was pioneering even from those times and that you've continued, you. continued on. So tell me a little bit about women's 
world because you know I remember also that I've been on one of the some a couple of the TV programs that you've done so just tell me a little bit about what it what it's done because it's got a high profile it's been on Christian TV so it's yeah worth thank you Th thanks Marcia for that and you've got such an amazing memory you know yeah. we've known each other way back yeah, I, didn't, you know, I, mean, I didn't realize at the time because um you were married to your husband i didn't realize you were part of the leadership team so it's yeah. like yeah you go abby you go you go girl <laughs> thank you <laughs> first member of staff as well you know so yes wow. yeah yeah um yeah so women's world came about as a response to what i felt was the holy spirit leading to um emphasize four different aspects of the woman's life. I usually, then I used to use the table as an example, a table, at least the average table has four legs. And so I would say your spirit, your soul, your body, and your finances. And so the TV program, you know, I was just favored. I was, well, it came through Jonathan actually, because after he did the National Day of Prayer at um, Western, the first ever event he did, this, the, when he did that, I met, um, um, you know, one of the key producers at Revelation TV, Yemi Balogun, and he and his wife, they invited me over, and that was how I joined She Matters, and I did that for years, and when the, the station moved um, to Europe, I, I, you know, was introduced to OHTV, and I did that, and I, I had a fantastic time, and um, yeah, and OHTV to moved, you know, to Africa, and after that, I just continued, you know, organizing Inspire, which was an annual event. I would bring in women who have been through so much to just come and share their journeys and their stories to encourage other women to be um, who God has created them to be. But I would make sure that those meetings, Inspire, would cover those four areas, your spirit, your soul, your body, and your finances, you know. And um, from there, I also continued with stepping out to make a difference, you know, running a forum for women. If I were to fast forward to today, so this is what I'm doing. Still doing Women's World, still focusing on those four things, but what has happened over the years, I've noticed that my I have more of a leaning towards spiritual things, which I've always done, but more prayer. So a few years ago, I felt to, um, it was during our start the year, right, which you usually do at church, you know, and when we started praying, I said to Jonathan, I really want to continue praying. He said, okay, so all through the month at 6 a.m., I would pray. When we finished all the 30 days of prayer and fasting in January, I couldn't stop. So Jonathan said, my darling wife, you're sanguine. You don't want to do something you're not going to be able to finish. So I thought, okay, that's true. So he said, what do you do start the week right? So I thought, okay, no, do start the month right. So I thought, okay, start the year right, 30 days, prayer, um, 30 days of prayer and fasting, fantastic. So I moved on to start the month right, which is five days, Monday to Friday, F of every new month, prayer and fasting. I did that and I was like, John, John, it's not enough. <laughs> not enough. <laughs> not enough. So I do start the week right every Monday at 6 a.m. Uh, same thing. I, I just um, go on Zoom on all my social media networks to just pray, start the week right, declaring the prophetic word of the Lord. Because I'm actually very prophetic, extremely. God speaks to me. I hear his voice clearly and I dream a lot. So I just thought, you know what? I want to go back to, not go back, but I want to carry on with that which God has called me to. So I do um, the prayer thing. And then because of my own personal journey with my mind and how even as a young convert, I suffered a lot of thought intrusions, not even knowing what, that they were a malform of OCD. And when I was able to overcome that by myself, you know, with no help or assistance, because I didn't even know I could ask for help or assistance coming from a place like Africa where it's not even offered. My father passed away, nobody offered me counseling, which is changing now, praise God for that. And so um, I found out that I have a leaning towards that. So now I spend so much time with my prayer um, ministry and also with mind. I call it MAP, Mind and Purpose Program with Abby, where um, I'm now a CBT um, 
practitioner. I'm also a trauma-informed um, practitioner as well. So anything to do, do with trauma, um, childhood experiences, I, I do a lot of counseling and I'm always, you know, working through. And I love, I, I love helping people because the Bible says when you have been comforted, you comfort others as well. With that, of course, um, TBN as well has been fantastic. You know, Jonathan and I, you know, we did TBN present. You catch us on there as well, you know, doing, uh, you know, just encouraging people to be the best that God has called them to be. Okay, so you do, you do a lot. Um, <laughs> why do you think women's ministry is so important? And, you know, in terms of the various things you do, the journey you've been on from being a pastor, woman's world, the TV work, and now working with women in trauma, why do you think women's ministry is so important? And what impact has what you do been having on women's lives? Well, women's ministry is very important. And, you know, I dare say any kind of ministry where we can come together and support each other is so important. Men's ministry, women's ministry, children's ministry. And for me, even, you know, when, you know how it is when you feel an impression to do something, it was really during the lockdown that the reality and part of the importance of being able to band together became very obvious because we really need to support each other. And also scientifically it's been said that women, every woman suffers from low self-esteem. Depending on your environment, it's increasing or decreasing. And so when we have women's ministry, when I, when I, when I, when you, when I hear you speak, I'm inspired. Like if Marcia can do it, I can do it too. And so we need that. And also, Marcia, with my journey with the mind and everything that I can see happening, I can tell you now, and I say this to my clients, the battle of the mind is real. And what we deal with is so different. When we come to a place where we hear others speak, when I'm, in my, when I'm on my own in my room, and when I'm reflecting on things, oh, oh, can I do it? I can't, yes, I can. I just remember a story that I heard at DTS, which is destined to soar, or Women's World, or you know, one of the forums that I organized. And I'm like, wow, I remember that story. If she can do it, get up and do it. And so it's so important we do that. When I reflect back, because I've been doing this for more than 20 years now, when I reflect back, honestly speaking, I have so many badges of honors. I meet women who say to me, it was because of it that, you know, it was through coming to baby talk that I received the strength to be able to go through my period of infertility. It was through coming to, for um, stepping out to make a difference that I started my business. You know, my life is better because I'm telling you, Marcia, I always say that uh, because I'm old school, if I were to have written, if I'd gotten everybody who has come through women's world to actually um, write testimonials, I'm telling you, I could write a whole book. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what you've just shared is it, it highlights the power and the difference that women's ministry makes. Because I mean, I do my DTS and it's just an event. I don't do the prayer thing that you do. I just have an event every um, three months, every quarter. And the, um, the stories that I hear of how women have just been able to go to that next level or they've learned something that's kind of really impacted the delivery of their ministry and the lives that they touch make you know that women's ministry, we do make a difference. It's worth, it's worth doing. It's worth all, everything that you go through. So in terms of for you, what's the key challenges that you face in terms of, you know, running your various ministries? Well, I think for me, it's been multi-talented. You know, somebody put it Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> multi-talented. I'm telling you, multi-potentiality. Oh, is that the phrase? Oh, all That's these it. phrases that come I'm to the I'm telling you. Yeah, I heard it. The lady wrote multi-potentialite. I thought, ooh, potentiality, potential, multi-potential, you know? And, you know, for me, and, and also the reason why um, I've come to a place of real settlement with the fact that, okay, it's spirituality and also um, things to do with the mind is because 
when by the time I've gone through the journey, I, there was a time I wanted to sew. I did Abby cap, actually the cap that is still, my daughter is a mom, you could have made millions from this, I said, I know, you know, so I've done that, I could sew, I even went to sewing school, I can make hair, I went to hair school, you know, I could do so many things, you know, um, and at one point I was thinking this is a curse, because I can't seem to balance everything, I used to do bed leanings, I used to do TV programs, I was after a while, I thought, God, please just help me to settle, help me to. So, so for me, it's been the fact that I could do so many things and having to force myself, you know, to a place where I'd be just focus on two or three things and don't overextend yourself. And so now I only do my daughter's hair. Okay. I do my hair too, if I need to. If I want to go out, I make my outfit, but I don't spend as much time now oh, doing okay. that. I even made outfits of, for some of my friends, I would charge them for it. You know, if now I only do for my family, I only make clothes for my family if there's an outing I sew for them. And also, um, um, so that, that for me, Masia has been uh, the main challenge that I have experienced because I reflect back and I feel if I just focus on one or two things, all through the years that it would have helped. And as a result of that, I, I became very passionate about mentoring because part of my mind and purpose program is to help women who are like me, multiple potential, multiple talents, really confused, or, you know, they want to start something and they don't know what to do. And I'm like, I've been there. You know, is it helping you to set up a business? Is it helping you to fine tune your, your gifts? And I do that on the side, on the Mind and Purpose program. So, so I'm a lot, lot settled now. I must say that. And so I still do business on the side, but I am very comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable in the fact that I'm this amazing woman with these wonderful gifts and I embrace that. It's not always been that way. It's the, you know, when you talk about um, one's journey, it's not always been that way. Another thing, the last thing I would say, two things was my multi-talent. The other thing was my identity, who am I? There was a time, especially in my thirties, I began to question myself, who am I? And I went on a whole um, journey, you know, along the lines of, okay, I am this, I am that. But what helped me to come to a place of real settlement, which I use for every single one of my clients who I feel needs it, is the temperament. Because by the time I did my temperament test, I realized that I'm sanguine, melancholic, sanguine, impulsive, life of the party, you know, likes to dress well and things like that. And I'm a melancholic, I'm a perfectionist. Marcia, it helped me to understand me. So I would look in the mirror and say, I love me. This was even before we began all these affirmations. Okay. <laughs> You know, I would stand in front of the mirror and say, I love me. And I said to the women, just whether you're generous, whether you're slim, whether you're, you know, tall, short, just look in the mirror, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And so those things that have been major challenges in my life, I'm glad I can use them to help people. And it's actually the structure that I have added to my training as a CBT practitioner and a trauma-informed um, practitioner as well. You know, I, yeah. I think a lot of women would identify with that whole thing of you asking the question, who am I? And that journey to kind of fully loving yourself and, you know, looking in the mirror and affirming yourself, because that's one of the key things that women's ministry is successful in doing is helping women to understand who they are and to um, follow the um, second commandment, which is that you need to love yourself as you love your neighbor. So it's, that sounds really good. And we're all on this journey to becoming, to quote Michelle Obama. Because mm -hmm. you know, when I look back when I was younger, I mean, I was relatively confident, um, but you know, you always have those chinks in your armor that kind of bring you down or make you melancholy in the sense of making you feel sad and it's as you get older and you mature and you get more confident that you can look back and say oh if only I knew 
then what I know now, then, you know, you'd be able to fully embrace, you know, your 20s and your 30s, but life is a journey. And unless you get that mentoring at those young ages so that you actually are prepared, then, you know, we become. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> we become, yeah. we've learned that journey of becoming. Yeah. You've been yeah. in ministry for quite a while. I mean, I'm really inspired to hear that you started as your teens, a prayer warrior. You come to the UK and then you, you become part of the uh, uh, a leadership team at um, Green Pastors Glory, Glory House, moving on to do your women's ministry. What's kept you going? You're a co-pastor now of City Chapel alongside your husband. I know that pastoring is not easy. Church leadership is not easy. You started off when you were young and you, you know, you've been going for a long time. What is it that keeps you um, going? Hmm, that's a that's a multi-million pound question. I haven't got multi-million pounds to give you. <laughs> what has kept me going? Honestly, Marcia, um, it's been just the mercy and the grace of God, honestly, because um, one of the things that I learned earlier on, I remember we went for this women's conference, women that were loose in the... In, in the States then, when Bishop T.D. Jakes just started, um, women- oh you, went, oh, you went there? Yeah, I did, I did. Oh, you yeah, see, you're doing years. everything before everybody else was doing everything. <laughs> I've not even been, but I, I love him. I think he's great. Oh yeah, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it went, went. And I remember one of the speakers um, uh, was saying that the fact, I'm telling you, she blew all my theology out of the waters. She said, the fact that you're anointed does not exclude you from tragedies and the issues of life. I am telling you, up until that time, I was on a high. I was like, I left that conference thinking, no, she didn't say that. And I spent time really, it was almost like that was preparing me for a very dark moment because what you find is God tells us to do things. He says, go, and you go, and things are just not the way you think it would be, you know? And um, so, and it, I, I found myself in a very, very dark place. Dark place spiritually, dark space emotionally, dark place. I was just so disappointed with life. I was disappointed with so many things. You know, I would go to church. I would still raise my hands. I would still do this. I would still organize. But behind the scenes, I was literally falling apart. And what changed? The situation didn't change. What, that was, that's one thing I'd say to my clients all the time. The situation didn't change. The circumstance didn't change. I found myself going down a spiral, down a hole, depression, everything. But guess what? I can't even tell you what happened. All I know is that nothing changed, but my attitude changed. My attitude changed that, you know, um, what I can't control, I have to hand over to God. We call it dealing with the unscripted issues of life. When life throws you these things that you just can't handle what do you do. The ones I can control, I will control. The ones I can't control, I hand over to God and I just dangle. That was the day I gave over 10 steps to this, 20 steps to that. And I would say to my friend, I'm literally just dangling okay. <laughs> in the hands of the master. You know, and, and it's part of the reason why I'm very hot on things to do with the mind as well. And you know, so I would say the grace of God and also um, matters of the mind, because then I learned to really deal with my mind, dealing to um, regulate my mind, you know, dealing, trying not to be non-reactionary and seeing my pains as an opportunity for growth and also being able to maintain my sense of identity as a woman and then as a wife and a mother and an entrepreneur as a pastor and every other thing. The grace and the mercy of God. And okay. I'm all, even today, even up to today, I'm still saying, God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy that's shielding me, protecting me, covering me, even, you know, through the valley of the shadow of death. I thank Amen. you. Amen. It's very yeah. true. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Yeah. So I've only got, I've got two more questions for you. So it's not been that long. Um, there's many women that feel called to ministry or to run a ministry. 
what three, and you've served as a pastor and a head of a women's ministry and business as well. What three pieces of advice do you have for them? First and foremost, become, first and foremost, know who you are. And if there's anybody who is listening and is struggling, reach out to me. Matsya runs DTS, reach out to her. You can reach out to me as well. Uh, the first thing I say to everybody is know who you are, your temperament, be self-aware so that if you're melancholic, you know you're a perfectionist. So it's gonna affect how you see things. If you're sanguine, you're impulsive and can be indisciplined. Know that if you're phlegmatic, you're laid back, you may take your time to get things done. If you're choleric, you may find yourself domineering and want to take over. So know yourself first. Be self-aware, first thing, so you can allow the Holy Spirit to tweak, update, and to help you be more balanced, uh, you know, that's the first thing. The second thing is go and get support. Find good support. Find a supportive group. Find, uh, you know, find a group of women or check out your church. Most churches have women's ministries. Get involved. Start from somewhere, even if... God is calling you to own your own or telling you that you're going to one day be the next Joyce Meyer and things like that. Or, you know, you're going to run the, 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 after knowing who you are. The second thing is to make sure that you serve wherever the Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do. In the process, something happens. And also the third thing I want to say, especially to female leaders is please, you do not on anybody who comes to serve you or support you at some point in time or the other release them to do what god has called them to do why must the woman why must anybody who comes to meet me be under me forever even naturally it doesn't happen at some point you have to go and get your own place and get married or you know do whatever mm. you you know so I want to say that um, to leaders, to the ladies, know who you are, serve, and then to the leaders, please make sure that you release the these women at some point, allow them to speak. Everybody in my team, I allow them to speak. In fact, sometimes it's been, Marcia, it's been through my meetings that other pastors have realized the gifts that some of the ladies, they, oh. That, that oh yeah, yeah, that they're close to are carrying, and then they begin to release them to begin to speak and to do things like that. And maybe you said three, but maybe the last thing I want to say is trouble comes to all of us. And so don't give up, keep going, keep, keep being supported and be supporting others as well. You must have people you're looking up to, people looking up to you, and you must have peers that keep encouraging you in this journey of life. I think what you said about um, everything is true, but what you said about serving is so crucial. Um, I know that in my coming up, I have served, when I say serve, that's just um, support people, no cost, support their initiatives, help promote their initiatives. And the thing about when you do that, you learn so much from that individual. It's all about, it's like cut price university education. You learn firsthand from a great person how they do what you do. Because mm -hmm. I can say that I have learned so much from just working alongside great people, whether it's about their approach to prayer, how they treat people, how they um, do business or they negotiate deals. There's just so much to gain from serving people so I would agree and yeah if you have a team I think it's so important to give them opportunities to shine because it's yeah. not just about you we're we're here I'm, I'm sure you feel that as well to encourage nurture and bring to the fore other people's gifts so yeah. that's what I find with kind of true leaders it's not about a queen bee syndrome it's about mm -hmm. helping everybody to be who God has called them to be yeah right okay this is the last question um i've been re you've kind of i didn't realize you were part of the leadership team so i'm kind of really encouraged encouraged by that because you know <laughs> you just see women around and you don't realize the input that they've they've had or are having in terms of helping a congregation and that was a very vibrant vibrant church i remember um glory house from those days but Thank last you. but not least what are the exciting plans you have for your ministry this year. I mean, you're on TV. What's more exciting than that? 
<laughs> so this year, so when, and, and talking about um, relationships and even, you know, always, you know, being uh, supporting others, people who are looking up to you, you're looking up to and uh, your peers. So one of the young uh, people said to me, Pastor, hey, you need to be on Clubhouse. I thought, oh, okay, just sign me up. He signs me up. And my goodness, I've been having so much fun. So this year, I've seen me do quite a bit of stuff on Clubhouse. I'm excited about that. How's that going? <laughs> Masia, within three months, I think I had 1,300 followers. I thought, wow. Whoa. You're on it's TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though. It is. People I really do want to talk in, you know, in these days. They just really want to get behind the, the, the image and just mm. dig down deep into certain issues and, and to just learn. So Clubhouse seems like a really great forum, actually. So I'm not surprised you've got so many women on there. That's good. Yeah, it is. And it's also, if for anyone who is listening, honestly, it's also very good for entrepreneurs and anyone who is looking to, if you have a business that is established and you need clients, I want to say you go there. And anyway, so I've got, um, I'm excited about TBN. I love what we're doing with them, Jonathan and I. We do um, shots, so we're filming in May. So it will be aired in June. We do TBN Presents, which is 30 minutes, you know, of eight programs, you know, and then we do um, three minute shots of 15 programs. So we've, we've done quite a bit since last year with them. I'm really excited about that, but I'm more excited about the prayer initiative that I do, start the week, right? Start the year, right? Start the month, right? Because I've always been uh, an intercessor. Um, and then last year I started, <laughs> last year in, in addition to the prayer thing, I do prophetic insights because we have a school of ministry that Jonathan is very passionate about. So when he's on break, I take on everything to do with prophetic. So I do prophetic um, insights as well. And uh, if there's anything that um, is really established, it's my practice. Um, I, I really do a lot of trauma um, counseling and also CBT as well for anybody who is struggling with their mind. So honestly, I'm just so happy where I'm at because and the reason why I'm happy is because I pray over my clients as a Christian. Um, I pray over them. I'm able to give them tools. I see, I think the joy for me, Marcia, for where I'm at now is that I'm able to see the fruit of working and joining with people, whether it's mentoring them to start a business or continue uh, on a path or a spiritual journey or grappling with their mind or their relationship or even with themselves, their self-esteem. I'm telling you, I can read you countless stories. So I'm happy where I'm at, Marcia, just working with the women, supporting my husband, and of course, praying through my children as they begin their own life's journey as well. How old are your children now? 26 and 20. Oh, big women. Oh, I remember when I was 26. Did I go to um, Glory House when I was 26? Possibly, I can't remember. <laughs> wow. I'm sure you probably did because I was in my 20s then. I got married at 27, so yeah. Yeah, most probably because that's when you was at you guys were at Leighton. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've got my wow. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so. <laughs> I'm going to end in a minute, but it's so funny when you kind of see people in their twenties and you can you remember yourself at yourself at that time starting on on their journey. It's a great age. It's a great age to be. She's got a mother like you, so she, and parents like Jonathan, so she can't really lose, can she? By God's grace. By God's grace, she's laughing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abby, for sharing your ministry journey um, with us. That's Thank you, Marcia, for having me. Honestly, I've really enjoyed myself. No, thanks, was... for being, thanks for being an inspiration yourself. You are one of the most consistent person that I know. You've stayed with PR, growing and blossoming. And, you know, thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks no, for... No, I'm, I'm really... It's really funny because when I um, I was thinking about I need somebody from the African community to come on this podcast mm -hmm. and um, I was thinking and the same time I was thinking and your name came up, I was actually watching you on TV, TVN. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, I like that outfit she's got on too. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching the podcast. Please do um, stay with me to, to see what other podcasts I have coming up. Thank you. Mm -hmm.